Hey guys, Adam with AeroWorks Productions and BlackOpsDrones.com. We're out here today with the 3D Robotics Aero. Now this is a fixed wing platform. We don't see a lot of these uh, in today's UAV market because everybody's into multi-rotors, but fixed wing aircraft can do a lot of things for you. They can stay up a lot longer, they can cover a lot more ground, and today we're going to be just showing some basic uh, flight performance with the Aero. Uh, simple takeoff, we're going to do some loitering and some circle modes, and uh, kind of give this a first maiden flight. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna do a flight check here, make sure all of our uh, control surfaces are working. Everything is looking good there. Right now we're just in circle mode, circling over our location here. All right, now I got to show you here. I came in here on my downwind and final, landed right here, and look where this baby stopped. Could it have got any closer to the GoPro filming on the ground? All right, guys, we're back here in the AeroWorks workshop. Now, we did our maiden flight with the Aero. Didn't do a whole lot. We wanted to mainly get up there and just make sure everything flew correctly. Test out the battery, test out the radio. We did do a couple autonomous modes like loiter and circle mode, return to home. We didn't get into any real autonomous waypoint flying just yet, but we feel confident that the aircraft is flying and all systems are go. So what I wanted to do is kind of break down the arrow a little bit and talk to you about some of the differences between a multi-rotor and this particular fixed wing, especially since they're both made by 3DR. Um, go into some of the additional add-ons that are added onto the PixHawk and uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, one of the first things you'll notice on the arrow is that we have this tube coming out of the front and this metal uh, shaft here, which is actually called a pitot tube or an airspeed sensor. So what this does in an aircraft uh, is take the airflow that's coming into the pitot tube, put it into an electronic sensor, and feed that additional information into the PixHawk controller so that we can get accurate airspeed and not only just ground speed. So when you're flying along with the uh, with an Iris, let's say, or an X8, you're using GPS coordinates and it's determining your speed. This is actually taking the airspeed that's flowing into the pitot tube and into the airflow sensor to give you accurate throttle control because as an aircraft is traveling through the air, if we have a 10 knot headwind and we're going 20 miles an hour, we're only really going 10 miles an hour. So the PixHawk needs to know when it needs to give the motor more power to get through that uh, headwind and uh, maintain the airspeed that we've set via the autonomous waypoints. Now under the hood here, we've got actually two hoods. We've got one that's a Velcro. This one was equipped with an FPV system. And I don't have everything plugged in right here, but we have a 5.8 gigahertz transmitter here. This is powered by a dedicated 900 milliamp hour battery. Okay, that in turn, that video signal plugs in down here into an OSD which takes flight data from the PixHawk controller, which we're going to get to in a minute, and video from an onboard nose mounted camera right here in the nose. So we have a small box camera in the nose. That video is powered and transmitted through the OSD and then out the video transmitter and down to our goggles or a monitor or whatever. Now inside the bay here, 
We have a large, spacious bay. Um, out of the box, they're set up just for the, the stock battery, but depending on where your battery is, you can have a fixed mount camera in here, other sensors, what have you. We also have our IC2 uh, adapter tray here. This is for all of your additional sensors. Um, also things like the LED and the uh, sounder and things like that plug in there. Um, you'll notice under the wing here, it's a little hard to see, but if I tip it, you'll start to see the telemetry antenna right here. And that's your standard 900 megahertz telemetry antenna, just like you get with any of the uh, multi-rotors that 3DR makes. And then on top of the copter, we have the arming switch, which you're familiar with. And of course, I, I already mentioned the LED. Now, one of the main things you'll notice here is that the wings are attached with rubber bands. And a lot of people say, well, that seems a little chintzy. Uh, but actually, we've been doing that for many, many years in the RC world, and we do it for really a couple main reasons. One is rubber bands are cheap. You can find them just about anywhere. Um, but really, the, the good thing is, is that anybody can install them. And second, you don't need any special tools. So you're not going to need that special wrench that you holds the two bolts on. They're basically held on by rubber bands and we do a crisscross pattern with them. I actually only have two rubber bands on right now just for the purpose of the video, but if we were flying this we would actually have a total of four rubber bands crisscrossing and going front to back so that we have maximum uh, uh, sec secure uh, wings on there. Now one of the things um, that they also do is that in the event of a crash, if this wing hits down, the wing will actually twist off and pop those rubber bands off and that will keep you from actually cracking a wing or breaking a wing. Now when we remove the wing, right now I have the aileron servos disconnected, but they're right here. It's just a simple Y harness. We'll go ahead and set the wing aside. And below the wing here, you're going to see the Pixhawk flight controller. You're going to see the 3D Robotics GPS and magnetometer. And then on the back of the aircraft, you're going to see the ESC or electronic speed controller and the Tiger motor uh, motor for power there. That's pretty much it for components. Now on the side we also have the USB port for doing programming and changes and we have of course the telemetry radio which I already talked about. Um, and here's a look at that speed sensor on the inside here. So you can see that the airspeed sensor detects air through the nozzle. It also has static pressure ports on the side and that's why you have the two tubes. Those come into an electronic sensor, which converts that into electronic data, which then feeds up into the Pixhawk controller to control airspeed. And again, this is important on aircraft because you can set um, waypoints, and if you have a crosswind or a headwind, you need to be able to tell that propeller to speed up or slow down to maintain your airspeed. Now this does break down even further. There is actually a case available, and we'll show you the case picture right now. Uh, what you can do after the fuselage, the wing is taken off, the tail section actually is removable as well by removing this little Allen screw here and disconnecting the flight control servo arm or clevis right here and that whole horizontal fin will pull off and that leaves you with a straight vertical fin and the tail boom. Now if you wanted to break it down even more there's actually some holes right here on the side that you can loosen the Allen screws and this whole boom will pull out and you can break it down even really small. But for the purposes of the 3DR uh, case that uh, Go Professional Cases makes, um, you can break it down into the pieces that we have here. The wings actually will separate as well. You take off the horizontal stabilizer and that will all fit in a hard case along with your radio, extra batteries, and everything else. This particular 3DR Arrow was equipped with the Spectrum DX7S. It's a very nice radio, high quality, has a nice feel to it, and it's set up to have two mode switches. And of course, you can program everything else. We'll, we'll, we'll be putting some navigation lights on here and some other sensors, and we can actually program these other switches to do that right out of the box. So, very nice radio to get uh, from 3DR. All right, guys, now we've done the maiden flight. We've done the overview in the workshop. Now we're back out here at our test field. We're going to go ahead and do some autonomous flying with waypoints. We're going to set an auto takeoff and a bunch of waypoints, and we're going to monitor that with Mission Planner, and hopefully we'll get some aerial shots of the flight as well. Let's go ahead and get started. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and we've got our aircraft position right here. It's showing up exactly where uh, it's powered up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start setting some manual waypoints here. This is going to be, move this down just a little bit, waypoint one. We'll do uh, waypoint two right here. Uh, we'll do waypoint three here. And let's zoom out a little bit. Let's do waypoint four down here. We'll do waypoint five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so we've got our waypoints there. It's basically a big circle grid. I'm going to go ahead and expand the bottom up here because this is where it shows what those waypoints are. We'll bring this up. Now you're going to see over here that uh, waypoint one is currently set as a waypoint. We're going to set that and change that to a takeoff. Okay, because what we want it to do as soon as we launch the arrow, we want this to climb to waypoint one and then continue on to two and three and so on. <clears throat> the rest of them can stay waypoints. The one thing we do want to do is set the default altitude. So 100 uh, is our default altitude, and that's fine for right now. And after waypoint 10, we will change that to a waypoint 10 to a return to launch. All right, so we've got our takeoff, all of our waypoints, ending in a return to launch. They're all set to the default 100. And we like how that looks. So we are going to write the waypoints, which is this button right here. So we're going to write the waypoints. And they have been written. Now, one thing you can do to verify that, again, is if you open this up, you could actually delete all these waypoints. Okay, now we have a blank screen, and if I go over here to read waypoints, it's going to pull them from the aircraft, and we should, and we'll go ahead and reset to where it actually is, yes. We should end up with the exact same uh, field there. Now you can see what it did, it, it, because I had waypoint one as a takeoff, it essentially put a marker there, and it went right to two, because it's going to climb to two, and then turn and go to three, four, five, and so on. 8, 9, 10, and then 10, and then return back to launch. And then just to verify that, we'll expand this again, make sure we have a takeoff point, all of our things are set correctly, and we're good to go. So we're confident that that mission has actually been loaded inside the arrow, and so we're ready to start getting it ready for its first flight. Now you can see here too, we have our OSD fired up, this shows us all of our critical information, battery voltage, uh, altitude, speed, lat, long, the whole deal. Last minute flight checks. Stabilize, everything is working. We have it in auto mode. Let's see if this works. There we go. Off it goes. 200 altitude. Got our power back. We're descending down here. Nice smooth descent. Keep the wings level. 
nice and slow and flare beautiful well hey guys that wraps it up here for an autonomous flight with the 3d robotics arrow so stay safe have fun and remember drones are good